Good morning everyone. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. Thank you for watching my videos. We are looking here at a subject on rate of change problems but derivative word problems. If when you do in the calculus one subject the whole topic on rate of change which are actually a good way of saying derivatives towards the end of that whole section you end up looking at word problem and applications in this video we want to learn what the technique is with regards to how you handle those type of problems a step-by-step -step procedure for handling rate of change problems some of you might know how to do this and some of you may not and rather than just talk about it we will get directly into it with regards to two questions with each question we will just address the step-by-step -step procedures that is needed to handle these rate of change word problems our first question is if a circle has a radius one centimeter and that radius is increased at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per second by what rate does the area change we're looking here at a circle we know that the radius is one centimeter and we have a good word here increased rate of 1.5 centimeters and by what rate does the area change our first step when you're looking at a question is you identify of course you have a rate of change problem which we do know because we're talking here about changes in rates the first step you want to do is identify some sort of an equation which will handle everything that you're looking at basically here with regards to your variables we want to identify an equation when we're talking about circles we're talking about radius and we're talking about areas our equation is very well area is equal to pi r square that right there the first step is usually the perhaps the easy step of this whole procedure in the step two which is not too far off in terms of difficulty you want to identify the variables the variables are what you will be looking at in terms of what will change what will not change when you're looking here at area pi r square the variables you know are going to be area and the radius because these are both susceptible to changing pi is a constant here it's not going to change that right there very well clears you through step two and then you want to look basically at step three the step three is an interesting step you want to apply basically the rate of change you want to apply the rate of change let's use roc for rate of change let's just say symbol to the equation because this symbol over here is going to affect what will change what will not change we know we're looking here at a radius which is one centimeter and the radius is increasing if the radius is increasing we know logically the area will increase as well we will apply a rate of change symbol to our equation and you want to do everything here normally with respect to time derivative or your changes with respect to time you're looking at area is equal to pi r square and this derivative with respect to time will affect the variables we have identified the area and the radius okay so we've done the step three and we've actually developed a rate of change expression from step three which is right over here now our step four is going to be a relatively interesting step we want to take the derivative i'll use that abbreviation take derivative of the variables v for variables when you do this you're going to open this up you'll do derivative with respect to the area over time of your area is equal to pi which will get pushed out as a coefficient then derivative with respect to the radius because that's a variable over time r square you see now how you've converted this expression into this expression when you've converted into this form now you actually have to do the derivative of what you know in terms of your variables anytime you're looking at a derivative of a variable which is, which is to the power of one you can apply the power rule the one will come over here you get one a to the power of zero which will become one so the derivative of that a variable the area variable will go away and it'll become one you'll be left here with nothing but derivative of area with respect to time the area having disappeared is equal to pi this is no different than a derivative of an x square and that's going to become 2r and then of course you'll maintain your rate of change symbol here as you see it now that right there is the step four not too hard so far now what we want to do is look at our step five you see how we're slowly building up the procedure over here and the procedure is really not hard especially when the questions are easy the procedure is not hard now what we want to do is place our quantities the known quantities that we have what we know from our equation in terms of our question we want to place these known quantities into what we have here in terms of our equation we're basically solving for the rate of change of the area this is what you're solving for but we do know we have a radius and we do know we have a rate of change right here we have both of those values present for us continue with this problem the rate of change of the area over time is equal to pi times two times the radius which is one one centimeter right times the rate of change which is 1.5 if it's increasing it's a positive times 
We don't have to worry about the units as yet because we will bring that in at the very end. And of course the last step, step six, we don't have to really itemize it too much, but we can do step six. We're gonna actually solve for the unknown rate of change, right? We'll solve for the unknown quantity. And let's do that. Our unknown quantity here is the rate of change of area with respect to time and we have everything we need to do that. We have pi times two times 1.5. When we do this, what we end up getting is a three pi. What does this three pi mean? It's a positive value. It means that the area with respect to time, the area will increase at a rate of three times pi. Whatever that quantity is, we can do that. But at centimeters square per second, if you want to present a good answer, you can just do three times pi and you get here a positive 9.424 centimeters square per second. So for this specific circle, as the radius increases at a rate of 1.5 centimeters per second, originally having a dimension of one centimeter, the overall area will increase at a rate of three pi centimeters square per second or 9.424 centimeters square per second. So you see how the procedure is step by step. You identify what your original equation is. Then you know you have to look at what the variables are. After you've looked at the variables, you want to apply the rate of change the symbol of that rate of change to your equation and then you open up your equation where you affect everything with regards to the rate of change of your variables. You will take the derivatives, place in your known values, then you'll solve for your unknown value which here was the rate of change of the area. So this question has been completed. Our answer 3 pi or 9.424 are correct. We'll look at this second question here next. This will be the last question here because we're just learning the step-by-step -step technique for rate of change problems. In this question, we won't take too much time itemizing all the steps, but we will verbally address them as they come along. We have a triangle here, a right triangle, which has a certain angle. It has a certain base, which is 10. Everything here is with regards to centimeters, so let's remember that. The height is 5 centimeters. We have to determine at what rate does the angle change as the height changes at a rate of 1 centimeters per second, and the base changes at a rate of half centimeters per second. So we have one variable here, we have one variable here. In each of these instances, we're seeing that everything here is positive, so everything's getting larger with time. So the height is changing at a rate of one centimeter per second, meaning the height is increasing every second by one unit or one centimeter, and the base is increasing every second by half unit or half a centimeter. We have to determine the rate of change of this angle. Remember, the first step is to identify a good equation which will handle everything we're seeing. We'll probably need a scientific calculator. A good equation would be one which relates what you're looking at with what you have. Here, if you did tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, this right here is my equation which will help me do everything that I need to do because I've gotten everything present with regards to the three variables we have. What are our variables? Our variables are basically the angle because that will change with time, the height and the base. Those are our three variables. So that right there was our second step to identify the variables. Now what we have to do is basically apply the rate of change, which we can. And when we apply the rate of change, we can actually open things up. The rate of change of the angle tan theta is equal to, now you have to do the rate of change of this h over b. Now the problem is you have a quotient over here. When you have a quotient over here, you're going to have to bring in the quotient rule of derivatives. You'll have to do the quotient rule and we'll do that and then we will, as we do that quotient rule, we will apply the rate of change. You know it's f and g, the f function, the g function. You'll do the g function here which is b with regards to the rate of change of the height which is the f function minus the f function which here is the height times the rate of change of the base or the rate of change of time of that b variable divided by b square which is g square. You see how everything has come into play here with regards to rates of change. Now before we proceed further we should start putting some of our known values. We know our b is equal to 10, h is equal to 5, the height is increasing. I'll just put rate of change of the height is increasing at a rate of plus 1 and I'm putting the rate of change here of the b, the base rate of change here is plus 0.5, which is half. There's another item we need to determine before we go further, and that item we need to determine is theta, and you can do it. If tan theta is equal to h over b, right, we know tan theta is equal to h over b, which is 5 over 10, which is 1 over 2, right, 5 over 10 is 1 over 2, then theta is equal to the arc tan or the inverse tan of this 0.5. 
and that's a value which we can set aside as one of our known values because now what we have to do is put in after we've done the derivative of all of this we have to put in our known values when we have our expression and then we'll find out our unknown value our unknown value which we're looking for is the rate of change of the theta all right when you're doing the derivative of tan theta you know you're going to get a secant squared theta you'll have secant squared theta and then rate of change of that theta over time right b what's the value for b b is a 10. what's the rate of change of the height it's a one right plus one positive one What's the derivative of h? It's no different than a derivative of a variable with to the power of 1. The h will go away because it will become 1h to the power of 0 minus. What's the height over here? It's a 5. What's the rate of change of the base? It's a 0.5. We can put a 0.5 here. What's the derivative of a b variable? It's 1 because it's b to the power of 1. You do the power rule, the b goes away. All over what? b square. What is b square? It's 10 times 10 which is 100. The only thing which remains in which I have not done anything about is this theta with regards to the secant squared theta. I want to put that here and I want to worry about it and do it. Secant squared theta is the same thing as secant squared r tan 0.5. Remember this is me computing the known variables with regards to what I can do with it. I have 0.5 r tan. Let's bring our scientific calculator. We put 0.5, we do inverse tan. We'll do the cosine of it because cosine is very well related to secant by a reciprocal. Do the cosine of this value which is 26.56. 26.56 degrees if you did the tangent of it you get a 0.5. But now we're doing the cosine of it. We're squaring it because we have a square over here and then we reciprocal it. We get a 1.25. So secant square or tan 0.5 is all going to give you a 1.25. And that's a value which is good. Now what we have to do is finish the problem. We'll come right over here and we'll finish this entire question because all of this right here, you know, was related to our tangent problem and then the quotient rule coming into play. I have 1.25. I have 1.25 derivative with respect to theta over time is equal to all of this. I have to compute all of that. I have a 10 minus 5 times 0.5. Here I get a 7.5. Here I get a 100. 7.5 divided by 100 is a 0. 75 right 0 0.075 and then the change in the angle or change in time is going to be 0 0.075 divided by 1.25 and what do we get you divide them 0 0.075 divided by 1.25 we're getting a 0 0.06 and you can say very well your answer here is 0 0.06 rads per second so as the height increases by a factor of one and the base increases by a factor of half, the rate of change of your angle, your angle will slowly get larger, but by a rate of 0 0.06 radians per second, and our answer should be good, and it's done. So remember how these steps have come into play for these rate of change problems. It's not very hard, but you have to break it down into those six steps that I've mentioned, and you go from there. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.